next speaker to give a keynote um, address is Magna Ekelnik. Magna first went to Knutbunds uh, in Norway eight years ago and hasn't missed one since. At one point, he had actually been to more clip books than Lars. <laughs> <laughs> He's a LARP designer and a pedagogue at Oslo-based company Amipir. He has organized summer camps for geeks, um, project management courses for teens, LARP festivals in Oslo and Vilnius, and um, been a part of the program group uh, for clip books twice. His current Flappy Bird record is 326. <laughs> and he's here to talk about the community. Welcome. Online. I'm not really sure, but I don't think the Nordic scene ever decided it aspired to become more than a Nordic scene. What I do know is that for several years, several national scenes tried to become the international scenes. They had international ambitions. And they strive for the recognition and opportunities that an international conference like Knutepunkt would give to their communities. In 2009, eight years ago, I went to Knutepunkt for the first time. And I was new, so I'm not, I can't be certain it was there already then. But I remember uh, on the opening night, uh, Johanna Collion playfully mocking Emily Kerr Boss uh, and the American tradition of indie RPGs. And I remember going to the Czech room party at Knutepunkt in Sweden in 2010. They had a checklist that they were handing out, trying to promote stuff like the LARP weekend in Brno. Um, and at Knutepunkt in 2011 in Denmark, I remember Karsten Dombrowski, who basically begged us to come to Mittelpunkt. And it wasn't like it was the first time he tried asking us. I remember that in Solmukota in 2012, I heard about the LARP festival Kula in Poland for the first time. They even had a book, but we never came. <laughs> so I don't think that the tension started in 2013 when Jakko defined Nordic LARP as a tradition with a 48 word brand statement. But I think that marked the point where it couldn't be held back anymore. In 2014, Martin Eriksson tried to change uh, and recoin uh, the term into proglarp, maybe to accommodate the growing audience of Americans uh, taking interest in what was going on in the Nordic countries. And at the same knutepunkt, members of Rollespillfabrikken and uh, Liveform uh, met up and laid the grounds for what would become the first College of Wizardry. And today it doesn't make sense anymore to talk about international LARP community in the singular form. There are groups of LARPers who travel from castle to castle to participate in LARPs with extremely high production values. The cult of cow is a real thing and LARPs are spawned out of the LARPs. Uh, and you don't need to go to castles in Poland to find high production values. You can easily travel to the Czech Republic or to Italy for a wide range of amazing things. You can also go to Germany, France, and Spain. They are also valid destinations. And many of the people who regularly cross borders to play LARPs never go to Knutepunkt because a conference like this isn't their thing. We have a vibrant network of festivals for black box LARPs and chamber games. Each autumn, we have Black Box Copenhagen in Denmark. We have Grensland in Oslo. And we have the Stockholm Scenario Festival in Sweden. We have a Minsk LARP festival, and the Baltic LARP festival is establishing itself. Black Box Horsens was organized for the third year this winter. And there was a festival for Black Box Chamber LARP and Freeform in London at the beginning of this year. <coughs> Four years ago, Palestine had its first international LARP festival for Chamber LARPs. And three years ago, I co-organized the Metamorphosis Festival in Vilnius. Just Right now, we have a festival dedicated to Nina, the patron saint of black boxes. <laughs> and we have the LARP Writer Summer School. With the blessing of the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Fantasieforbund and Education Center Post have managed to turn a Soviet era workers' resort into a magical place where more than 250 people from more than 20 countries have learned how to become LARP designers. 
I'm lucky enough to be one of them. In North America, things like the Living Games Conference are dragging the Nordics across the ocean just to complete the circle. And obviously there's stuff I'm forgetting here, uh, or I'm ignoring it, or I just don't know about it because there's so many things going on. Uh, but the bottom line here is that there isn't any one international community of LARPers. There are several different scenes. And of course there's some overlap between them. But they're distinct, they're separate, and they're autonomous units. And this is a good thing. Because with these different communities, ideas that couldn't take part, couldn't exist out of a single community can be there. And because of the connections between the communities, we have cross-pollination that pushes us even further uh, in where we can go with LARP. And some of these things for sure have been spawned out of Knutepunkt directly or indirectly, but they are not part of Knutepunkt. And that might sound like an obvious thing to say, but if we accept that it doesn't make sense to talk of an international community of LARPers in the singular form, then that also means that it doesn't make sense to think of Knutepunkt as the international hub for LARP. I don't know if we ever made sense to think of Knutepunkt as the international hub for LARP, but it doesn't anymore. And when we look at how organizations have formed and how they have grown, we often assume that there lies some intention behind the way the changes were made. And more often than not, that assumption is false. Usually the intention is ascribed after the change has actually taken place. Gnutpunkt has gradually changed to be a non-Nordic, uh, or changed to accommodate for a non-Nordic audience. The internationals uh, have been included into the fold and are shaping the conference. And it's for the good for everyone. And it has adjusted itself on the way. I don't think it was the plan when people from four Nordic countries gathered that in 20 years we would have people from all over the world. It just happened. Knutpunkt is a tradition. It doesn't belong to anyone. There's no organizational body governing Knutpunkt. As far as I know, there aren't any formal statues in any of the Nordic countries regulating who gets to make the new Knutpunkt. In Norway, we just magically let this agreement emerge who is probably fit to be responsible the next time. And if that trust magically disappears, then a coup uh, emerges uh, just as organically. And I think it's the same way in all the other uh, Nordic countries. I've always found it a bit strange when someone has claimed that we need to move Knutepunkt out of the Nordic countries. First of all, who would have the authority to make such a decision? I hope there will be a Swedish Knutepunkt in 2018, a Knudepunkt in 2019, a Solmukotta in 2020. But even if none of those happens, I, I can promise you right here and now that in 2021, I'll be part of making Knutepunkt in Norway. But secondly, and more importantly, I think we should look at what we would actually achieve by changing Knutepunkt radically. I, I think it's a bad solution to the wrong problem. I don't think what we need as a community, a community, is uh, a cheaper Knutepunkt or a Knutepunkt that can accommodate everyone. I think we need to establish a meeting point for the different international scenes we have right now. And not just another conference about design or theory or whatever, a space intentionally designed for facilitating meetings. One way to start that is to begin where Knutepunkt didn't begin. To establish a formal body governing where the conference would take place. Communities could apply to a formal context with a concept for how they would make the next conference with a plan for space and a budget. 
A winner would be picked by a diverse committee consisting of elected LARPers. And it would probably be a good idea to have at least two destinations set before that process was started. But I think it's, it's something we should think about. And I think also out of this, over time, we would get something that is sorely needed. And that's an international body that with some authority could formalize the norms about what constitutes ethical behavior in LARPing. It's not like this is a revolutionary way to organize things. Several conventions, tournaments and fairs travel the globe this way. A European LARP Expo was suggested on LARPers BFF in June last year. And I think it's an idea with some merit. Thank you.